My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am President and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hello, I'm Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. And I'm Craig Pasqua, co-host, Native Voice TV. Yes, welcome to the show. We have a very special guest with us today, Techiquatli Ray Bayesa. Welcome. Hello, it's good to be back here. And I'm glad you're back. You were here about a year <coughs> ago, and we had so much that we learned from you, and you had more to say, and we had to cut you off. Mm. <laughs> but I promised to bring you back, and okay. so you're back, and we're going to continue where we left off. I can't remember where that was, but <laughs> we'll find it. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here. Good to be back here. And if you could tell us all your uh, indigenous background. Um, well, on my father's side, I'm from, uh, my family comes from Chihuahua, Mexico. Uh, Raramuri country, the Spanish called them uh, Tarahumaras, mm -hmm. and on uh, my mother's side, Taino Hawaiian. Oh, and uh, yeah, they met my dad was in the Navy and he was stationed at Pearl Harbor for a while, and that's <laughs> where he met my mom. So the rest is history. <laughs> and here you are. Two coasts, yeah. yeah. Hawaii. Taino over here in the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. So, so we well, understand uh, Columbus stopped there first. <laughs> mm. <laughs> On his way to India. And he thought <laughs> the Tainos were the Indians. That's where he started yeah. doing damage. That's that's where he started, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, he came across the, um, you know, his first two voyages and stuff, but he came into the island of Kishkea which today is called the Dominican Republic, Haiti. Oh, okay. Uh, in the Taino language, it's called Kishkea. And then uh, later in the second voyage, he came around to Boriquen, known as uh, Puerto Rico uh, right, nowadays. Right. And, um, you know, that was where basically the, the Holocaust uh, of this continent began, you know, so. You know, let me ask you this. You said you were from um, Chihuahua, or your roots, mm -hmm. and and then you hear Native American. Isn't Mexico part of the Americas and being Native, wouldn't that be considered Native America? How come you hear these different things? Well, you know, myself, I don't, I don't like using the term American, mm -hmm. like Native American or American Indian, those kind of terms because mm -hmm. Native people are not. Right. You know, they're whatever the tribe is that, that, that you're mm -hmm. from, you know. Um, so it, it's a certain level of, um, of colonialism that, and being a conquered people, all of us, uh, that those kind of things are still, are still there, you know. So, um, yeah, I just native. And the borders weren't there. No, the borders the weren't borders there. The borders weren't you know, there, no. so we were there like, was. We were like the eagle eye view, you know. You look down, you don't see no borders. You just see the rivers and the mountains and the lakes and, and those things like that. You know, you don't see borders. You see all of these people running around doing their life and you know they're not called wetbacks or spicks or anything else you know those are just the two leggeds on this on this planet you know on this earth and uh, and our our ancestors from all the different tribes had a lot of interaction mm -hmm. you know a lot of interaction you know we didn't have cars in those days so you know we walked mm -hmm. you know and uh, walked up and down this entire continent you know and uh, 
got to know, we traded uh, the different things that come from our respective regions, you know, we traded a lot of things, you know. In Mexico, for example, there's a lot of uh, the jade and also turquoise uh, mines in, uh, you know, different parts of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we've seen in what's today the United States, uh, some of these things found where they dig up, you know, in, in ruins or oh, different areas, you know, they mm -hmm. found mm -hmm. things that go, hmm, this tribe here didn't have those, you know, but we traded. Right, right. You know, so when our poste coyotes came up, our traders came up and carried these things and feathers and you know whatever things that we made mm -hmm. we we traded and then we traded with the with the different tribes and stuff like that you know so um you know so there was and and there was also ceremonial things that we that we shared with each other and stuff you know uh, we would come up this way make friends and establish relationships you know uh, our native ancestors of all different tribes spoke more than just one language right. you know mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times the the tlatuanis or chiefs of our people spoke uh, five, six, seven languages, you know, and uh, to be able to relate mm -hmm. to the other, other tribes and to the leaders of the other tribes like that, you know, so that's another big thing that because of colonialism we've lost, right. you know, we've lost not only our own one language that is, uh, belongs to us, but all the other languages that we right. know to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, relate with others, other tribes, you know, like that. And this cultural sharing, too, wouldn't be possible if we had a wall <laughs> between us now. Right. Between. So, That's right. <laughs> so some of the, the tribal or the vestiges of, of colonization, um, you know, are still exist today. And I can see how, you know, you don't want to be labeled as a Native American or, or Native this or that. But, um, and that's going on with, among the American Indians, too. And a lot of them refer to themselves just tribal. Yeah. And they refer to their tribe, mm -hmm. like in my case, would be uh, Chaliki mm -hmm. um, or, or uh, Paiute. Right. So, yeah. but, um, and that's how you identify yourself mm -hmm. sometimes. But yeah. Um, and that's the way it should be. <laughs> you it, know? Absolutely. Because there's so many tribes, you know, like a lot of people, they think about Mexico, for example, and they probably, well, Mexico is Aztec and Mayans. Well, there's Setzal, Sotzil, Cholas. Mayos, uh, Rararmi, uh, you know, there's so many, Huicholes, uh, Yaqui, uh, even the Kickapoo have a, right. a area of land in mm -hmm. central Mexico that was given to them. And a know, lot of those use. tribes are on both sides mm -hmm. of the border. There's some on the, on the borders, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the Tonono to, Tono Oham are on the U.S. and um, uh, Mexican borders. You right, know. the Yaquis and the Kickapoo, they're all on both sides. Apaches, so, yeah, you know, there's so many, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of history, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, uh, that we don't know um, or in the general population has been twisted and, you know, so many lies told about all of our different peoples, you know. Um, you know, the Mexicans, you know, were those lazy ones always sleeping, leaning against the cactus, sleeping mm -hmm. all day long and stuff, you know. I mean, there's so many stereotypes, right. you know, that cause our, our young people growing up to be ashamed of who they are. Uh, they don't want to speak Spanish, which is not our native tongues, but, you know, um, it was something that we had to fight for. And so there's a certain uh, ownership of that because even, even uh, speaking Spanish, a lot of youngsters were, were hit in schools uh, and definitely told, no, you cannot do that. You cannot use that, that language. You that's know, pretty so much been the case with all indigenous people too, mm -hmm, though, huh? mm -hmm. with the languages. And that's why it's, there's not a lot of people, indigenous people, that speak their own language a lot. Some of the elders, and then they have been passing it down because of the punishment that they had to experience growing up trying to speak their own language yeah you know, just torture well, the, not just punishment the main way of uh, destroying a culture is by taking their language and taking their land you know if you lose the language and you don't have your land base anymore where your ancestors are buried the sacred areas where you go and do ceremony and those things then if you don't have those or even the languages to be able to uh, sing songs that, uh -huh. that invoke our relatives when we do ceremony and, and things like that. It's, it's like, if you don't have that anymore, what are you? 
what do you become? You become a brown version of the the, the dominant culture. Yes. You know, so you know, so I really feel so good when I hear uh, different tribes, um, you know, having uh, starting up their language programs and trying to save them, and you know, um, you know, taking advantage of the elders that are still alive and and still there to to help learn the language and stuff, and then the younger ones ch teaching it once again once they learn it, you know. Right. You know, I wish it would have started a lot earlier, but at least it, it's happening in a lot of different places now. So that's really important. And there should be these schools for the kids, you know, mm -hmm. how the Greeks have the schools or Jewish people have schools for sure. their kids mm -hmm. to retain the language. There should be a place where our kids can go and learn the language from the time yes. they're small, learn the culture, mm -hmm. you know, learn the customs, the ceremonies and so forth. So that way they know that they do have a rich heritage and this is, you know, the, the mainstream culture is not their, their yeah. heritage, you yeah. know. And that's why I think a lot of times <coughs> they, they feel lost because they can't really identify. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, to me, learning, learning the language and language programs are more important than establishing casinos, you know, because uh, those language programs are going to help assure survival of the tribe, right. you know, and, uh, and the ceremonial ways. Because the language and ceremonies are so interconnected, you know, you can't have one without the other. And, uh, and again, using the language and the songs to invoke our ancestors, you know, to call upon our ancestors to come and be with us, you know, to help us, you know, to, uh, you know, help us in this day and age, this time that we're, that we're in now, you know. So even the Nahuatl language, you know, is, um, uh, uh, kind of having a, people are starting to learn that again. Mm -hmm. It's the most widely spoken native language on the entire continent. Is it? Yes, the Nahuatl languages, and it's probably, um, I heard up to maybe eight to 10 million hmm. Nahuatl speakers, wow. you know, both in Mexico and Central America and, uh, and in smaller numbers here in the United States, you know, but that's also under attack, you know, like, like any other language and stuff. So, and there's a, there's a couple of universities and programs where th that have been underway for a long time to learn the language, to teach it. Do and, they have uh, that in the United it. States? Um, the language, they teach the language? They probably have it in small little pockets and stuff, you know. Um, I've even heard they have some of the Nahuatl language in a couple of universities now, hmm. which I was surprised when I first heard that. and. And happy at the same time, you know yes, that uh, that it's there, even if it is at a university. You know, at least it's it's there. You know, yeah. so yeah. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's definitely necessary, and we should really encourage groups to learn their language. And mm -hmm. I know you've done a lot in the community with Capolito Noleke. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to take a real short break, but when we come back, I'd like to learn a little bit about Kapolito um, the uh, Mexica New Year's okay. that uh, you, your group puts on annually and how big it's grown. But uh, let's take a quick, quick, short break. We'll be right back. You're watching Native Voice TV, and we're talking with Techequatli about the Mexica culture and some of the activities that have been going on in the community. So let us know about the Mexica uh, New Year's. What is that all about? It's pretty big here in San Jose, I know that. Yeah, it's gotten um, pretty big. I think um, we're about in our, yeah, I can't remember now, 16th or 18th year, you know, doing it wow. here in, in San Jose. Um, Calpulli Tonaleque started in 2004. Which is um, a? Um, well, we're, we're a cultural uh, group, a cultural family. Um, we're trying to learn um, our different aspects of our culture, our history, uh, ceremonies, and, and to live it. Not just to learn it and then go back to being whatever, but, mm -hmm. but to live it, you know. Um, and so the ceremony celebration has, has grown very, it's gotten pretty big now. Um, probably the largest uh, Mexica New Year uh, ceremony in the country, I'm, I'm hearing. I read that too. Yeah. Uh, in the recently, mm -hmm. after the last um, New Year, I read this is the largest one in the nation. Yeah, and there's a couple of um, like new areas where people are uh, starting to celebrate it and and have that ceremony as well, which is good. I mean, we don't 
own it. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a cultural uh, patrimony. You know, now it's so it's you say Mexica ceremony, but a lot of people know it as the Aztec New Year's mm -hmm. because people have heard and seen the Aztec calendar, right? Yeah. But Th they normally, and we're talking about our, our viewing audience, they don't know what Mexica is or, w w you know, so can you yeah. explain some of that? Well, yeah, we call it the uh, Azteca Mexica New Year um, uh, because the, the Aztecas were, um, were the, I'm trying to look for the right word, precedent? Don't the ones that be before, oh. the ones that came before. And uh, the Mexica were like the last tribe that came into Mexico, you know. And um, uh, the history of the of the what we call the Tonal Mashiot, what people call the Aztec calendar, it goes back centuries, you know, hundreds and probably thousands of years. Now, I I, I always grew up hearing that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that it was more accurate than the. Gregorian calendar that it was more precise is that correct oh yes the Gregorian calendar is actually pretty imprecise and the more time you go like if uh, you know from if you go a hundred years then it, it gets thrown off thrown okay. off even more you know um, yeah it's been called probably the most uh, uh, accurate calendar in in the history of of the world you know uh, the Mexica as l along with the, the Mayan calendars, which is which are pretty much the same. They just have some little differences, but they're pretty pretty much uh, aligned. And there's several calendars. I mean, there's the Mayans have like uh, I think like 18 or 20 different types of calendars. You know, the the Mexica also have other other calendars as well. You know, so and they all kind of work together. You know, like those wheels and the the gears mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, so uh, the Tonal Mashio was basically a, a kind of like a agricultural calendar, you know, helped us with the seasons and when to plant, when to harvest, what what crops to plant at certain times of year, uh, that kind of thing. And um, you know, it's now been and it's a 365.25 days, so 365 and a quarter days. Um, which uh, you know that's already a quarter more than the Gregorian calendar, yeah, right. right? And so by adding that quarter of a, of a of a day, which is about six hours every year, you don't have to make adjustments the like leap for leap year, year mm -hmm. and 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 that kind of thing. Uh, this year is uh, the year for Tekpat, for Flint, Nawi Tekpat, uh, for Flint, and. Uh, the numbers and those things all mean have different meanings. You know, the the four, of course, is um, you know comes from is a very sacred number to our people. Um, it speaks to it represents like integration. You know, talking about the the four directions, mm -hmm. talking about uh, the four elements of life: earth, water, wind, fire. You know that that, that uh, make up the elements of life for all of us, and there's energy and power that comes from the four directions, that comes to each hi living human being, no matter where you are at in the world, and we absorb those powers and those energies and stuff, and so that's where what I mean by integration, you know, uh, and uh, it's part of uh, the um, the natural way of understanding of understanding things, you know, of understanding life. Mm -hmm. uh, one reason why people get so out of balance is because we're no longer look at ourselves as part of nature, you know, but as the dominators of nature, right. you know. The, the dominant society wants to dominate nature and they screw everything up when they do that, you know, but we understand that we are part of nature. And so we have the respect for the animals, for the plants, for the trees, the mountains, the rivers and the streams and and like that, you know. Um, and so that's uh, the four, and then the Tekpat is one of the, um, every year we have different years, you know, we have the, the, the Tekpat, which is the flint. Uh, we just came out of Akat, which is reed or bamboo. Uh, next year will be the, uh, will be uh, Kali, house. And then the year after that will be Toshtli or rabbit. 
and then they repeat. Uh, those are the four, oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. four years that we have. And there are also day signs on the, on the calendar. There's uh, uh, the 20 day signs on the Tonan Mashiot uh, and 18 months that, that, uh, that of 20 days each. Called in Spanish, they call it a veintena. And so that's 365 days. And then every year, like, the, like this year, Tekpat begins at sunset. Okay, basically when the sun when the sun goes down, next year um, Kali will begin at midnight. The following year Toshtli, uh, Kali Toshtli begins at uh, six, about six a.m. You know sunrise, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, Akat at uh, midday. You know, so it's six hours every day it, it advances uh, the, the 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 calendar, and so that makes it a very you know pretty precise. Um, uh, tool, and it's also one of the things that are used when we we do the study for our names. You know, um, uh, the the tonal puhkis are the ones that do the studies. Use the tonal mashiot as well as some of the ancient codices. And it, it's based on your <coughs> birth date and time. Yeah, with uh, with your date of birth and your time of birth, our ancestors were able. Our ancestors were. Bad. They, they were, <laughs> they were scientists, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and they figured out over the years that uh, with that information, they could figure out what kind of person you're going to be, your the good, the bad, and the ugly. Wow. You know? <laughs> your your abilities, uh, um, strong points, weak points, and stuff like that, and then they use that information, like with the children, uh, to help guide them in life, not to tell them. Well, you'll be you're going to be a, a, a warrior, or you're going to be an astronomer, or you're going to be this and that. Not to tell them what they're going to be, but just to help guide them mm -hmm. to bring the most out of what already has been shown, uh, what what their essence is, mm -hmm. you know. And I've seen dozens of uh, of the studies that have come out, my own, I'm sure yours, and others that when that information is given, it is right on. I mean, it tells who you are, mm -hmm. what you are, and I mean, it was just amazing. The first time I was uh, made aware of it and even looked at mine, I showed it to my, to my wife, and she goes, oh my God, that's you to a T, you know, everything. And then other people I've looked at, and it's like, this is amazing. It's just so, it is, it so is. precise on how they can identify who you are and not know you. Mm -hmm. They've right, never, exactly. never seen you, never seen you from you know, until today. But uh, here's, your, here's your study. Boom, 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 bam, bam. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, your strong points, your weak points, uh, you know, and things like that. So it's really um, quite amazing, you know. Well, the naming mm ceremony has become very big, right? I mean, it, I think the, you moved into a different day because it were, there were so many people going through the ceremony. Yeah, um, and we don't really have any, like a set thing or depends when uh, Maestro Usually we have our maestro Silokoa um, from Mexico, and he comes up, and we try to do a we try to do a naming ceremony every year. But sometimes we're not able to, and you know, there's so many people that are trying right. to reclaim that Which part of good. their heritage. Which is good. That's you know, uh, yeah, it's a good thing because the name is not just a name; it's a, a responsibility. You know, because you have to live up to mm -hmm. that name. You know, and maybe an ancestor may have carried that name before, you know, so you need to carry, carry it in a good way, in a strong way, you know. And so uh, there's teachings and stuff that goes along the whole process of getting the name, you know. We try to let people know, you know, don't go bragging or don't be, oh, I'm this and that, you know. No, you, you are who you are. Carry that in a good way, carry it responsibly, mm -hmm. and try to live what and who you are. You know, and that tonal, the, that that study for your name helps to helps you to understand and know yourself a lot better. You know, like that. So. Well, we only have two minutes left. I hate to say that, but if you could tell us quickly, the the actual um, the day of the ceremony is starts with the sunrise and. Yeah. So we had it on. Um, uh, as I said, this year the ser the sunrise the um, the New Year's on March. 11th, and we did the sunrise ceremony on March 12th. Um, uh, you know, it begins at 
Well, we're out there at like 4.30 mm -hmm. in the morning uh, to get a fire going. Um, the fire is actually a fire that we, we did, uh, we do sweat lodge, Temascal, uh, uh, before that. And so the fire from the sweat lodge is saved and it's, it's guarded by fire keepers within the group, or ch what we call Chico Mecoats, the, the ones who care, the ones you see with the, with the copal doing the smudging and, and smoking down the sacred space and everywhere that, like that. So, um, so they save that fire and bring it and we light the ceremonial fire on Saturday. And then it goes out through Sunday and we keep it until the end of the, of the activities there. And so you do it yeah. annually. Yes, we do, we do it annually. We invite relatives from the Zuni Nation, uh, o Ohlone Nation, uh, uh, the Pomo Nation, um, mm -hmm. to come in and ceremony to pray with us, you know. We'll like be that. out there again with you. Okay. We were there this year, we'll be there next year, and we hope you at home will join us next year with the Mexica ceremony. Thank you for being here and sharing all of your wealth of knowledge with us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Great, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here, Craig. Thank you. Helping me out. Yeah, I know that <laughs> I've learned a lot. Thank you both. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. We'll see you next week on Native Voice TV. Like us on Facebook. See you next <laughs> week. Thank you.